Alright, so let's go and start this tutorial. If you are looking to actually see the shortcuts that I use, they will show on the left side here. So I have a frame here and I'm gonna name this button components. And what we need to understand when we are learning how to set the right states and the controls for the buttons when it comes to professional, let's say, project uh, UI interfaces, what you want to do is you kind of want this setup here. I'm going to copy and paste it here. Meaning we are kind of three dimensional. First, we will have the sizing of the button large for let's say desktop and small for let's say mobile. Then we will have the states which would be a default, hover, active, focused and disabled. And then it can be a primary button like you see here or it can be a secondary button where it is not filled. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually get this button and I'm gonna copy it here. And I'm gonna detach it because I will redo this. So I'm gonna detach its instance. So now it's just a normal frame button. And this is what we have. And this is its default, meaning without anybody doing any action, this is how it will seem. Now the first thing we want to do is because we don't want to actually have this button copied and pasted each time and when we are supposed to make changes we would have to go, de go there and actually make the change we want to make sure that we turn this button into a component in Figma and the shortcut for it on Figma is Option Command K so now and I'm gonna actually name this button Components New and now we actually turn it into a component and it has certain superpowers. What you want to do when you have a component is, if we have a button of a particular type, and we do, like we said, it can be Howard state button, large button, or let's say secondary button. What we want to turn in Figma then is we want to turn this component into a variant. And to do that, I am gonna hover around this plus button, and I'm gonna press variant here, and boom. And now we have our component. So what we want to do now is to actually set its properties, meaning what kind of attributes will define how this button should look. Like we said, we have three. The first property is probably size. It can be either large or a small button. The second property, and I'm gonna add another variant here, let's say would be state. And the third property would be actually type, as in, is it primary or is it secondary? So the first button here would be its size and we have to give values to the knob buttons we have. So I would actually click the button I want to specify. So now we want to give it value because there will be multiple buttons here and I can show you an example. Let's say we add three, four, five and this is how many we will have, right? The Figma needs a way to actually differentiate when to show which basically type of the button here. And to do that, we while we have the attributes, we have to give a specific value to each attribute per button. So for this one, we will actually be large because we are selected large size. For the state, I'm gonna make this a default. And for type, we are on primary column, so I will name this primary. And yes. That is kind of looking good. The hover is important. So a hover is basically only present in the desktop. It's when the mouse comes in. And what happens usually is, and I'm gonna set my settings here first. Let's say it's still large. This time the state is hover and the type is primary. But the way it looks has to be differentiated and the way I do for hover with Buttons like this background where they are actually dark is I make them even darker. So maybe 10% or 15% darker. And that is kind of how the hover state works for me. And the next state we will have would be active. So still large type, still primary state would be active. And this is when your user actually presses on the button. So. I would still have this 15% just like hover, but there's a but here. I want the text to be just a bit more up, meaning not centered. And the second thing I want is that I want an, basically a shadow, but not outside, but internal. So I will have an internal shadow, so inner shadow here, and just a bit, let's say 
like 2, 6 and because of the dark background 50% and I'm gonna zoom in for you guys and if we didn't have blur here it would just look like a black line so you usually want to when you're shadowing things 3x the let's say the blur and 50% is because we have a dark background here and that will make it look like pressed so let's say this is an object when you are actually pressing in the light will be around here on its top because now we have a shadow and we have to mark that shadow so we are trying to make it visually subconsciously seem as it is basically pressed it is 3d so let's move on to our next button and the state we have is focused so if you are a beginner you are UX designer you might not know what this state particularly does so let's say you are on this website called ConvertKit and you have some sort of disability where you cannot use your let's say fingers to be as precise with mouse as you like so what you can do is if you press tab on a website that is accessible the actual state you go to is a focus state so that you can go through all the action I action buttons on a site with just my tapping here so we want to specify this state as well in our designs so the way the focus state actually looks like So the way a focus state actually looks like is it will have a stroke value here and I'm just gonna copy and paste the initial color here and what I want to actually give it here is I want to copy and paste the color and I want to whiten it and maybe not even a stroke value let's say we can actually maybe give it a like a like a drop shadow but just with spread so I'm gonna say clip content and I'm gonna give let's say uh, 0 4 4 and 50% but the color will be around here and maybe 2 maybe 2 is even better so maybe a 3 spread and 3 blur and that is actually pretty good so I'm gonna even whiten it here yep maybe a bit more blue not white but bluish and I think that looks pretty selected to me yeah I think that looks pretty good maybe even one less blur yeah I think two blur looks pretty good and that is our focus state now the last state disabled is the most easy and I forgot the sizing here we gotta make sure our variant is specified large state was focus and the type was primary and that's already done and here we have large state disabled and type would be primary and what I'm now to actually do the let's say the disabled is very easy it will work 90% of the time you just want to make sure the opacity is 50% and you have your disabled state and that is the first half of the, our primary large buttons all right so we are halfway there what we are now going to do is to move to the secondary buttons and there is one fundamental difference between a primary button and a secondary button and that is the secondary button kind of lacks the active state because it already looks activated in its default state so if we come here i'm gonna actually hold command to enlarge in this component here and i am gonna basically press the first one press the plus here and I'm gonna move the, this button to here and what I'm trying to now I'm going to do is the way a secondary button will look like is I'm gonna press the shortcut shift X to switch the fill and stroke value I'm gonna press ctrl C to copy the color here and okay and this is how a secondary kind of element looks like and I'm going to name this large state is default but the type is secondary now I am gonna do the hover state first and the hover state is actually the hardest one for this so hover what you want to do is you want to fill it but you want to fill it with a basically a color that is not as 
dark as the fill color of the primary, a bit more desaturated, around here is good, and that kind of gives that the mouse is hovering. The next state we are going to have is we are going to skip active, just like we talked about. And so we are going to have it here. A moment, I'm going to copy this one instead. And uh, nope, nope, we want to get it down. Yeah, I think Figma is bugging a bit. We are going to get it to here. And what I'm going to do is, just like the other one, I'm going to add some effect. Now, to actually add my sp basically spread value here, you need to press the clip content, so Figma understands the in-fill matters, but you have to fill it with white. There is no other option to do this like on Figma here without having a fill color here, so it's kind of like a hack. And what you want to do is, you want to, let's say, do two spread, three blur, zero, and you wanna basically get this value, option command C to copy the actual value. And let's come back and I'm gonna just paste it here. And boom, and did we name this state? And it's not a default, it's actually uh, focus. And then the final one is we are gonna disable this yeah, I'm just gonna go here, let's say 170, and I'm gonna grab it, put it here, and like the primary button, we will just get this to be 50%, and that works. So I'm gonna name this disabled. And this is kind of all of our secondary buttons. I'm just gonna check now if we ever have a Figma message of if we missed a component. I don't think we did. So these are our first two buttons. And now that the primary and the secondary buttons are done, I will show you how to basically prototype these buttons so that you don't need to, whenever you are using, let's say, on any kind of a mobile or desktop screen, you don't need to basically write the interaction of, yes, if a default button is clicked, we are going to go to the, let's say, the active state. We want to do it once inside the component so we never have to do it again. And that will save you a lot of time. So I am going to show this to you on the primary buttons first and I'm gonna actually have a mobile app screen here that I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna move it here and this is where we will put one of our buttons okay to make it work. So what we want to do on the primary is so let's say we are in the default state what do I want where do I want to go if we are in the prototyping section of Figma, where do I want to go if the default button we have is actually hovered? We want to go to a hover state. So I'm connecting them with these arrows and I'm gonna set the event not to on click, but while hovering. Now, while we are hovering our button, if we stop hovering, we are going back to the default button, right? So if we, let's say, mouse leave, then we are going back to our default. Now, while we are at hover state, if we press, we are going to actual active state. So large and on actually, let's say while pressing, we are at the active state. And these are the three you kind of can do. For focused, you really want to make sure the dev understands that it's, it's with a tab key and for disabled, we will need a certain condition. So we can set the timer key, but for these three, I will just do these three so you understand how it works. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to our mobile app screen here, and I'm gonna to go to find our components, and I'm gonna to go to button design system, button components, and this button is a new button here. I'm gonna put it around here. And I am gonna now play this home screen. So like you can see if I hover it's happening and if I press we are pressing and if I let go we go back to original. So now that we are on the screen I am going to test our let's say interaction table. So we are at the default state. If I go here we are hovering. If I press we are actually active and if I take off we are going back to default. And that 
is kind of how button components work guys now and that is all the buttons we have guys and make sure you do your homework first finish the actual small buttons primary and secondary and i want you to connect their primary and secondary buttons like i showed you in how to make a prototype so that the interactions are created inside the components and you can actually see when you play the prototype of how they actually work like and if you have any questions in this homework just reach and write a comment on this video link with your actual question let's say your figma file and then i will answer you personally if you love this video about button components you will love this next video about color styles that will literally scale your design systems even further